Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is Amin with the Mind Heist podcast, episode 7. This is a bit of a different episode because it's just me on my own. It's a little bit shorter as well. Uh, but nonetheless, hope you enjoy. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's Amin here with the Mind Heist podcast. This week is a little bit different. Uh, Muhammad Akhi Twi got a bit uh, caught up in something. So, as you noticed, uh, we haven't put an episode out uh, on Sunday as we usually do. What I'm trying to do to make up for that is to record my own episode uh, with uh, Muhammad uh, not on it uh, so we can keep this the flow going, okay? So, what I'll try and do, probably be a shorter episode than usual. Um, I'm, I've got some questions that I've left unanswered. Uh, on my kind of personal channels where people have asked me questions and I'll go through that inshallah and then um, I'll try and add in different ideas as I go inshallah so bismillah the first question is how can one be confident about their bodies in Islam so um, I'm assuming you know as a Muslim how do you how should you think about your your body or how you look your appearance um, and uh, be confident. How do you get a feeling of confidence? Well, I think I would give the same advice uh, to a Muslim as I would give to a non-Muslim, the main advice I would give, and that is to know yourself. Um, this is the main thing. If you get this right, you won't have to worry too much about the other, um, the other tactics that will help with your confidence. Um, and that's knowing yourself. So what does that mean? It means know what you're good at and know what you're bad at because the truth is if confidence is all about being good at everything that will never happen right you'll never be confident in that case because you'll never be good at everything um and everyone's everyone's gonna be good at things as well at the same time so know what you're good at and then you can find uh some kind of peace in that in the fact that you know you're actually good at xyz now, if you can't think of something that you're actually good at, then maybe that means that your day-to-day -day life is spent doing things that you're not optimal at, you know. There are things that you could be doing that you would excel at and you would get better and better at, um, but you're not doing that on a regular basis. And so you're constantly doing things that you, you find hard to be good at and you find hard to improve in. Whereas no doubt there are things out there that if you did regularly and you 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 know trained or whatever it is you need to do to improve on it you would quite quickly become very good at it and when you're very good at something you can hold that to yourself you know that you're good at it and then you can also have that freedom to say yes I'm not good at the other things right um, and this is what I found to be the main thing um, now I'll give you a real example so once uh, I was at work and uh, basically there were two people in in who shared a role okay we had the same uh, job title okay um, and our manager called us in after a couple of weeks on the job he said uh, I've noticed you know I've got to know you a bit now uh, the two of you I've noticed you know you speaking to my colleague you you're good at this 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 and you I mean you're good at this 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 and you're not good at that and you know usually someone new in a job they're trying to uh, impress um, they they might be upset by being told by their manager you're not good at this but me personally I was completely comfortable with it because um, I knew what I was good at and I knew I wasn't good at what he was talking about I knew I had room to improve and I did intend on improving that thing because it was quite important part of the job but at the same time there was something very important and a big skill that I knew I was good at and he said you're good at that and you're not good at this and so I was like it didn't hit me at all because I, I knew myself you know I know what I'm good at I know what I'm not good at to an extent you know so um, that was that's a good example you know it didn't hit me it didn't hurt me it didn't upset me he said I was not so good at something that I truly was not good at but what help held me there and what caused me not to get upset and not feel down was that I knew I was good at something. I knew I was something very specific that I know I'm good at. I know I'm good at being analytical. I know I'm good at expressing myself verbally. I know I'm good at uh, technical 
uh, skills when it comes to analytics and uh, strategies, etc. right? Without going into the details. So because I know I'm good at that, I can hold on to that and whatever I'm kind of naturally, if you want to say, not good at, I can just let go of it, let, let go of it. And I can just accept I'm not going to be good at those things. However, I'm going to excel at these few things. And, you know, this is what listening to uh, podcasts, uh, interviews with some of the top performers in different fields, whether that's in business, in sports, um, in, uh, I don't know, therapists and stuff like that. They all just excel in a narrow field. You know, it's quite rare to find people that are good at multiple things, you know. Maybe they'd be good at two things, maybe three, but maximum three, really. Um, and so I don't put the pressure on myself to always uh, try to be good at everything, you know. Um, and so I find a lot of, you know, because let me be real, I was not meant to be a confident person. You know, if 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 I went with the flow of my life of how I should be, if you if you know what I mean, I I would not be a confident person. I'm not really confident, I would say, but I was able to overcome so many hurdles related to confidence because of some of these uh, techniques and strategies and uh, mindset uh, frameworks that I use. You know, um, so yeah, the main thing is to know what you're good at, know yourself. And then the stuff you're not good at. So in this case, your body. I mean, look, if you know you're sick at something, firstly, your body being however it is uh, will not bother you as much. And secondly, because you know you're good at something, you value yourself more. When you value yourself more, you tend to treat yourself better. When you treat yourself better, you tend to eat better and put more effort into how you eat and how you dress and how you uh, exercise and stuff like that. So I could go into more details. There's actually a self-esteem series on my YouTube channel, Sierra Masters. It's an old one, but most of the stuff still holds true. But the missing ingredient from that series is what I've explained in this uh, episode today. So how to be confident about your body? There you go. In terms of Islamically, obviously, we know Allah created us uh, the way we are. and. Uh, you know, we have so much to be grateful to Allah for. And so, you know, I would turn to gratitude as well because you can't have negative feelings while being grateful at the same time, you know, as uh, Tony Robbins says. And that's so true. Um, if you're grateful that you, you're healthy, you know, you have a functional body, you know, you, you have two limbs, and I mean, four limbs and two arms, etc. Your, your organs are working like that. That could be something that you focus on more. And then as you know what you're good at, <clears throat> your confidence will increase and then maybe you can do something about, maybe you're overweight, I don't know what you what you mean exactly. Maybe you'll be more motivated and stuff because you'll value yourself. So thanks for that question. And uh, I think it's a pretty good answer, inshallah. Uh, next is, how do I stay humble when I have some knowledge? <clears throat> well... Um, I can obviously just speak about my own experience in this and uh, I think you know I, I can become arrogant uh, I mean I notice myself getting arrogant sometimes uh, for example you know being in the UK um, spending most time with Muslims um, when you're Arab and you kind of understand Arabic that's kind of makes it a bit easy to get a bit arrogant then on top of that if you spend a little bit of time honestly just a little bit of time uh, studying uh islamic studies and stuff um you feel a bit then that, that's another gateway to feeling arrogant as well um but what always um helped me out helped me to keep level-headed was that i kept going to these classes basically um, when i was going to these classes i would always be hit by something some kind of uh big uh, takeaway a big breakthrough like that just made me realize wow i really don't know anything you know and uh, so the more i learned the more I, I realized wow there's really a lot more to learn than i know you know so uh that that's really what helped me like obviously if you study with with people who don't know too much themselves you could get arrogant because you can you can kind of see the finish line 
mm-hmm. if you if you know what I mean. Uh, but if you're with people who are truly giants and you know they've been studying for twenty, thirty years, and not only have they kind of memorized a lot, but they have very good uh, critical thinking skills and stuff. It, it kind of puts you in your place, you know. That's what I would say. So, um, in summary, for the answer to this, how do you stay um, stop being arrogant? How do you stay humble? Is to uh, spend time with people higher than you. Spend time with people who are smarter than you who are memorized more, who have better thinking skills, better, they come up with better solutions. Um, this is general, but we're talking about Islamic knowledge here. Um, that's pretty much what I would say. Uh, and this is my personal experience, Yanni. Whenever I felt a bit like, wow, yeah, I know this, um, something would hit me and I realized, wow, I don't know. And the only reason it would hit me is because the people around me were so obviously superior to me when it came to knowledge and understanding right so uh yeah it's, it's i would say it's about uh company um and even if it's not about company there are other ways of having company right so reading books it's kind of like spending time with that author uh when you can't understand a book um properly and you can't get your head around some of the ideas that's a humbling experience as well um and always uh, another thing I would say is really uh, <laughs> who gives you knowledge, right? Who gives you understanding? Uh, it's Allah. Without Allah, you know, there are many people who, you know, they're not intelligent people. Um, Allah didn't give them that. They, they find it very hard to uh, grasp some basic concepts um, in general, you know. And uh, so if you do know something a little something is only because Allah gave that to you so that's the second thing company and uh, always uh, reminding yourself that Allah gives knowledge um, he gives it to you you didn't take it um, it was given to you so yeah um, then uh, the third kind of question uh, this is about job interview so I've got asked about this a couple of times and I haven't actually made a solid video on this topic so I thought let me give this uh, give this a go because I have I was thinking about it recently. So my tips for job interviews, which again, uh, I, I don't think I'm that guy that's, that, that was supposed to be good at job interviews and who was supposed to be um, confident or whatever, or to come across as confident. I wasn't not supposed to be that guy, but uh, with some of the reading and stuff like that I've done and put that into action, uh, I was able to make some improvements, alhamdulillah. So, uh, job interview, how do I prepare personally? And how do I kind of go in there and uh, feel pretty comfortable about it? Firstly, I have the mindset of uh, just how they are, because let, first let's say, why is a job interview uh, awkward? And why is it uh, uh, nerve wracking? It's because you know you're going in there to be judged. And being judged is very um, uncomfortable, right? Um, you know, you could, uh, part of the reason is because uh, instinctively, uh, we uh, are social creatures. We rely on living with others in order to survive. We're only strong because we work together. We put our collective knowledge and skills together to, you know, eat better and develop our societies, right? And so if uh, we don't get along with people, um, that can cause us to die basically if we're on our own it's a you know if you're on your own and you don't know how to make a a gun or a spear or whatever you know there are many animals that can get you uh, so so uh, that's why judging being judged is very uncomfortable because if you're kind of judged to be bad then it could be the end of your life but anyway that's why it's so so nerve-wracking um, so what do I do? I, it, it, because you're going in there to be judged, I flip it. I say just how they want to know if I uh, am a good employee for them. I'm going into in there to see if they're a good employer for me, if they're a good fit for me. And when you don't have loads of experience and you know you're not some senior person going in for some big position, it might seem what's the word unrealistic or. Um, a bit too optimistic to have this mindset but um, the reason I, I, I'm 
applying this mindset is for my own good purely for the interview you know sometimes i truly believe that they have the upper hand and there are many applicants that are just as good as me at this job um, and so who am i to go in there and say actually you're not such a good place for me to work but purely for the mindset factor and the confidence it gives me i apply this attitude of i'm going to see if they would be a good um, em employer and you know no doubt um, uh, when i was going for my last interview uh, about a year ago um, i actually was interested in what i was going to get out of it and uh, you know is it a good place for me and that's why i had questions ready for them so when they asked me what questions do you have i would ask them about training you know and that puts them on the back foot because they have to answer to me it gives me some kind of authority and also um it makes me show that i'm serious i want to develop and i want to learn right so have questions ready for them because you're going to judge them just as they're going to judge you but obviously you have to be humble as well because in in reality i mean unless you're a superstar employee um there are many people they could choose <laughs> okay so uh that's the first thing the second thing i do is i go in there with a plan so if you were to employ me i would do this 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 for you and it depends on the position of course uh, but you got to do a little bit of research on the job and the position try and understand what they want from you you could even give them a call and try and find out more and then uh uh, write down a plan and this is what I did I, I would go in I would, with a notebook I'd write my plan on a notebook and I'd have it in there in the interview and I would even I wouldn't memorize it per se I would go and I would have it there to, as notes to refer to and I'll show them yeah I put in the work yeah I did the research this is exactly what you're going to get from me I mean as long as you agree with this plan you know to be implemented I would come in and I would do this and this and this and this. And it shows you understand, shows you do your research, shows you've put the work in up front before they've paid you one dollar, pound, whatever. Um, you've actually put some effort in. Um, and it, show, it also demonstrates your ability. Okay. So go in there with a plan and say, I would do this for you. And even if they don't ask you about it, you have to present it to them. Uh, it's like a pre presentation, really, you know. Okay. Uh, next is. Uh, when you go in there so you know often the the nerves kick in let's say 24 hours before um something that helps me is knowing that uh 24 hours before the interview there isn't much i can do to improve my chances of getting this job it's too late now it's over 24 hours is chilling time it's not time to be stressed about the job so 24 hours before on my way there uh, when i'm waiting to go in i'm just trying to relax really i'm just relaxing because there's nothing i can do anymore you know and you know your nerves or your emotions try and tell you uh you should be nervous um you should be anxious about it um because obviously you're going in there to be judged but uh, you, your rational brain must keep telling you that uh there's nothing you can do now to improve it and therefore it's better to relax it's better for the performance of your interview to be in a relaxed state and then uh finally uh just know that the decision has already been made with Allah you know in the end like you go in there the interviews are flop or it's not the kind of questions they ask you um it, what kind of person they're looking for how quickly they have to hire all this stuff you don't know that you're not in charge of that like Allah has written what is going to happen so you just have to do the uh, you have to basically try and qualify for Allah's help, you know. In tunsur Allah yansurkum. If you help Allah, meaning like if you put the effort in, um, then Allah will help you, you know. So you did your thing, you came up with the plan, you tried to have the right attitude to give you confidence in the interview, and now you're in there and just let it flow and see what happens. Um, remember, you don't need them, right? Because if you're going to get a job, it's Allah's going to give you the job. This person standing in front of you, they're just a person. They also need a job from Allah. I and mean, they're also getting their, their provision from Allah. So it's not a big deal. They might have a fancy suit and 20 years experience and a uh, uh, big salary. But yeah, and eat. You, know, you, you both eat and you both drink and you both go to toilet. You're both going to die. So it's not a big deal, inshallah. And uh, 
just keep that in mind like i don't know i kind of sometimes i adapt that attitude like who's this interview and like who are you like you're not giving me this interview we're just having a conversation right now but allah is actually going to give me the job it's not really you you know i don't say it to them but it's kind of these are the things that go through my head in order to it's a fake attitude honestly i put these ideas into my head purely for me to be confident and smooth during the interview after that after the interview is done then i can go back to re being realistic if you like but i train my brain i trick my brain so it goes into this mode of confidence of who cares i kind of do this who cares thing and it kind of helps me uh, at least to there if i get the job it's a different situation but for this interview I, I try and adapt these kind of things i prepare i make a plan and then i've got this attitude of allah's going to give it to me it's too late to make changes now you've prepared whatever you prepared you can't change that now that's ready now just go and have the conversation with them and uh, they're going to judge you you judge them back and just kind of inshallah khair you know so this is my advice for interview let's see how long i've been going Oh, just about 21 minutes, that's about it. Okay, there's one more point that I wanted to cover, and that is uh, basically a kind of summary of uh, of um, a video I made. <coughs> uh, and it's, it's about an attitude again. I hope you found the job interview thing uh, helpful, because these are the types of things I do all the time. And if you didn't know, uh, my website and YouTube channel, Sierra Masters, it's all about designing a mindset, designing your mindset to get ahead in life. So one of the mindset principles that I apply is when it helps me get ahead, I uh, lie to myself and I create a kind of fake attitude for the moment to help me get ahead, just how I explained in the interview question. Now, equally, um, another mindset I apply, uh, I try to apply always, is to always look for how I could be wrong, how I can blame myself for something uh, going wrong, something I'm displeased with, you know. So typically, you know, uh, something happens in, uh, I don't know, um, the Rohing Rohingya Muslims, they're being killed, okay, they're being uh, attacked, oppressed, etc. Um, now, one can be outraged at, uh, I don't know, the um, governments around the world for not acting on it, for the Muslims being so weak, um, etc., etc. One can be uh, outraged, etc. What I do, try to do instead is uh, ask myself, what did I do wrong to cause this? And it's, uh, it's something people find very uh, uncomfortable because uh, you, everything's your fault. You go around with this attitude where everything is my fault. Um, now, why do I apply this mindset? Because it allows me to firstly focus on myself, you know, focus on not attacking others, not blaming others, not shouting at others, not insulting others, but looking inside. And what, what's inside is something that I can actually control, you know. So it also it reduces my, uh, you know, blood pressure uh, because I can say, look, it's, it's possible that my brothers and sister, uh, brothers and sisters are getting oppressed because of my uh, sins. You know that is uh, possible, and therefore I can today I can reduce one sin, two sins that I might have done usually. I can restrain myself and I can do something real about this. You know, um, and that that is uh, the power of this attitude. Blame yourself. You know, sit down and think, what could I have done better? You know. Um, I got fired, you know, from one job, and honestly, the the employer themselves were quite incompetent, and I was thinking that pretty much from day one. Um, there were, you know, day one, yeah, I walk in and I realize what a mess this company is in, you know. I went in there not as some high level manager. I just went in there as a as one of the people where they're working. But I realize my manager doesn't know what, what he's doing. And it's quite clear, not just to me, but to other people. It's clear he doesn't know what he's doing. So, you know, you have to deal with this situation. 
Now, uh, I, try, I, was, I was actually naively going into this job to try and do an excellent job and try and contribute everything that I know and uh, really do as best a job I could do. Um, as you might know, that's not how it works in, in many companies. Um, and so uh, because of that clash, I suppose, of attitude, me going in there trying to uh, apply everything I know to improve things at the, at the, in this business, um, they didn't. They had other plans, basically, and I got fired. Okay, now it's like because of how incompetent they were, uh, it was easy for me to blame everything on them. You know, one of the main reasons I got fired is because my manager was blaming every mistake on me when it wasn't me. Right um, now, I could say it's his fault. I got fired, etc. Right, um, and I did do that initially for the first few days, but then started thinking okay i mean in the end i'm fired it's over now what can i do what could i have done better and i came up with some very good answers i came up with a good list of things that i could have done better you know um I obviously it was too late to change it but we're talking about this is what i'm talking about thinking of yourself focusing on yourself how can i improve myself all right i already got fired but how can i become a better person out of this thing and so I sat down, I was thinking, how can I blame myself? What are the reasons for me getting fired? No matter how stupid and incompetent the the employer was, still there must be some reason that it was my fault, that I was wrong, okay? And uh, wow, it's refreshing, trust me, it is refreshing. And, you know, we can uh, apply this in many, many scenarios, man, like... I don't know, playing sports and you lose a game, um, car crash, you know, car crash, it's clearly the other person's fault, but still ask yourself, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? Um, equally, uh, you know, we probably do a whole episode about something like racism. Racism, when a group of people are being singled out and somehow discriminated against or oppressed, it's, it's, you know, it's normal for them to point at the oppressor, right? But uh, I would tell them, don't do that. Point to yourself and look inside yourself. And anyway, most 90% of the time, it is, it is the actual people being discriminated who have the biggest power to improve their situation. Because look, evil people are evil people. They're not going to change. They have no reason to change. They're comfortable being evil. But you, if you're not bad people then you have it in you to change things if you you know obviously you're going to mo you're motivated to change if you if you're good people and so what can you do this goes for black people it goes for uh, i don't know women you know women claim they're oppressed uh, and men oppress them um and uh, men are doing xyz to them look inside yourself and think what could i do better you know um, or uh, whatever minority, you know, Muslims in the West, uh, you know, Muslims in the UK, only 5% or whatever of the population, um, the government cracking down on you, closing prayer rooms, this, this, prevent, this and this. Okay, what could you do? How is it your fault? How is it the Muslims in the UK's fault um, that this is happening? What could you have done better? I could give you 50 things right now, but I won't, I won't do that. It's a very good exercise. All it does, it puts all the responsibility on yourself, which means it puts all the power on yourself to actually go out there and change things. So, yeah, uh, very, very useful framework. Blame yourself. Okay, this is Amin on the Mind Heist podcast. I hope I didn't kind of bore you or... Um, it's not too monotone where it's just me talking. But I didn't, at the same time, I didn't want to leave you empty. So, okay, uh, this is Mind Heist, pod Mind Heist Podcast. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, you know, I think you, if you like this kind of, uh, some of the answers I gave and some of the mindset principles that I am sharing, then you might want to go over to Sierra Masters. Um, that's with a double E, Sierra Masters um, YouTube channel and find loads of videos there, really. Um, and uh, I think you might enjoy them. 
Um, and uh, just uh, hold on for the next episode where, inshallah, Muhammad will be back and we'll have a lively discussion as usual, inshallah. In the meantime, if you have any questions or suggestions for topics um, or, you know, you want to reply to something I've said here or in previous episodes, then send an email to mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. mindheistpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we don't have too many emails going through there that we won't get to yours so we'll check it out inshallah for sure and uh, make sure you share this podcast with uh, friends and family Um, I'm really enjoying some of the Muslim podcasts out there some are pretty weak and cliche and some are really excellent alhamdulillah so uh, yeah please share it and hopefully we get this whole Muslim podcast uh, ecosystem going i'll tell you one thing that's excellent about podcasts is that people will struggle to watch a 10 minute video on youtube right attention span is nuts uh but when it comes to podcasts you know you you, you're traveling or something when you're listening to it or you're vacuuming vacuuming or mopping the floor doing the dishes okay or you're cooking or whatever and so you know you you happily listen to one hour of people speaking and uh, the thing about one hour is that you can go deep, you know. Uh, there are some topics which require you to spend time, oh, you know, opening the topic up, taking the bits out, uh, you know, analyzing the parts, different parts, closing it back up, folding it, doing, you know, exploring a whole topic. You can't do that on a three-minute video. You can't do that on a flipping, you know, tweet, 140 characters. I think really us i mean everyone but you know if we're focusing on ourselves and how we can improve i'll say muslims our media needs to be more long form and it needs to be deeper stuff uh stuff where you spend time and effort listening or or reading you know uh, because that's where the real benefit is really this is what i find and that's what i believe when you sacrifice for something you always get more out of it. That's what I feel. So sacrifice time or effort, you're going to get more out of it. Okay, this has been a meme going on a bit. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.